Hey guys, welcome back to another mini art history video. My name is Miss Madison and today we're going to be talking about Pablo Picasso. Now, I have a little quote up here by him. The purpose of art is washing the dust of daily life off our souls. I really like it because I feel like it correlates to how we could be feeling right now. There's a kind of a lot of unknowns, not being able to go outside, maybe interact a lot with our friends. So please, while you have the time, if you can, please keep creating. Keep making art because that's keeping our brains active and it's also going to be the way that we're going to get through all this together. Alright, so Picasso. He is mainly known as the co-founder of the Cubism movement, which is defined by using geometric shapes and offsetting proportions and perspectives, but he really did have a more traditional upbringing of painting. His father was a fantastic painter and really saw his, his son's potential at such a young age. He is a professor at art and he even encouraged um, Picasso to take the entrance exam to an art school at just 13 and he got in. And then by the time he was 16, he was going to Madrid to go to an even better art school. Um, but really that, that formality, that formal teaching really wasn't in line with how he wanted to create art. It pushed him to create his own sense of modernism at the time. And that inspired a lot of the art he made when he moved to Paris in 1901. He was essentially living in poverty. He was living up to that starving artist stereotype with a poet named Max Jacobs. They were living in this apartment with barely anything to eat. Even some stories say that they had to burn their own art to create heat for them. And during this time is where we see a lot of varying periods of art in his work. Each period has a unification of a theme, and a lot of it was in response to how he was feeling and also what the world was going through, not only what he was going through, but the area and the environment that he was living around, what that was doing to him. So during this time where he's essentially living in poverty, he's very depressed, he just lost one of his friends. We call this the blue period, from about 1901 to 1904. We talked in our color video about monochromatic, things that are monochromatic using one color and using different values. Well, that was what the blue period mainly was. It was a time where he was mainly using just the color blue um, or blue greens. And we talk about the language of color and how it can be something, um, blue can be something very sad and depressing, even if it's calming. But really for Picasso's, it was mainly in that depressing sort of feeling. But he also still is painting in a little bit more of that traditional sense. He's still stylizing it. It's still not quite the realistic traditional paintings he was doing, but he still was adding that Picasso-ness to it. It just hadn't reached the same extent of Cubism quite just yet. So going into about 1904, 1906, that's really when uh, he starts to come out of his depression a little bit more. He starts seeing a little artist friend, they start going out. You see her show up a lot in his paintings. Um, and just generally the tone of his pieces become a lot more positive. It's called the Rose Period because we see a lot more orange and pink hues make their way in instead of the, the dreariness of the blue. And really it wasn't until around after this period that he started to make that shift into something maybe a little bit more abstract. After the passing of post-impressionist artist Cezanne, uh, Picasso really got a chance to see his work and was really inspired by how he simplified certain forms to portray what he was trying to say. Um, and then during this time period, a lot of different artists like Matisse, like we talked about, Picasso, well, they're very inspired by post-impressionist artists like Cezanne and Gauguin. Um, they also were inspired a lot by actually like African sculptures and African masks. They liked the geometric shapes of it. Um, and so you see kind of a merging of these two styles during this time. And they start to push Picasso to really abstract his figures a lot more. We see one of his first masterpieces is a painting called, and I'm probably gonna butcher it, but it's called Les Demoiselles de Avignon. And in this is kind of one of the first experimentations that Picasso had with abstracting a form. He spent so much time in the preliminary stages of sketches and drawings and comps before he actually made that final piece. And even then he still kept it hidden for quite a long time. When he showed it to a small group of friends and artists, he actually got a lot of negative backlash. So that's why he kind of kept it to himself for a little bit. Matisse actually hated it. 
he thought it was a criticism of the art movement currently and thought it took away from, you know, the attention of his own paintings. But really, when he finally released it to the public, despite the controversy, it became something that really revolutionized the art world because it was pushing it into a more abstracted field. So coming off of this, from about 1910 to 1920, him and fellow artist, who also is the other co-founder of Cubism, George Brock, I'm sorry if I butchered that name, <laughs> Uh, they, they really worked to lay the foundations of Cubism. They were really interested in breaking down not only the human figure, but just generally anything they were looking at, an object, whatever subject it is that they were painting, and breaking it down into the basic shapes. When you guys ask me how to draw certain things, that's usually what I tell you guys to do, right? If you want to draw a football helmet, what are you gonna see? You're gonna see a circle first. So break it down into the simple shapes. And that was a lot of the basis of what they were doing. Shape and color become huge proponents of cubism. When really we're trying to break things down to simple forms, we need that color to help differentiate the forms that we're seeing, right? So a lot of that was cubist art. For the rest of his life, Picasso continued to create. We're mainly gonna focus on the cubist movement in our project today, so we won't go too much into uh, his surrealist work, his theater work, his costume work, but it was expansive. Over the course of his life, Picasso created over 20,000 paintings, drawings, costumes, theater sets, sculptures, all kinds of artwork he was constantly creating and doing. That's probably one of the things that I respect the most about Picasso, is that from a young age to his death in 1973, he really was just constantly creating. Creating that much work and having that much of a body of work really shows us now, years and years later, how he evolved as an artist, as a person, and he really had that all just by looking at his body of work. So in the style of Picasso, we're gonna do our own little mix and match abstract portrait game today, make our own little drawings. All you're gonna be needing is a piece of paper, something to color with like usual, and um, I'll see you guys then. So if you watch the character game, we start off a similar way by taking a piece of paper and tearing up into six separate pieces and then putting one through six on each one. That's how we're gonna get all the features of our face. Remember to choose twice for the ears because I wanted to have two separate ears. For the colors, you can choose whatever you want, but I was really drawing my inspiration from the blue and the rose period by Picasso. That's where I got my monochromatic colors of blue and I also used some monochromatic colors of my pink. So I hope you experiment with some different colors and have a good time with this. Bye guys.